When it comes to phone cameras, Apple's iPhones tend to have some of the best. Now don't, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Phones like the Google Pixel 7 Pro, Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra go toe to toe with Apple in terms of photography, though mm, I still think video from the iPhone is a step ahead. But really, none of that matters. Because for over a decade, professional photographers, enthusiasts, filmmakers have had a holy grail. What if you could have a truly large image sensor like you'd find in a high-end mirrorless camera and a lens mount that could attach to a phone? <laughs> now, if that sounds familiar, it's because everyone from Samsung, Panasonic, Motorola, and others have in part flirted with this idea. Xiaomi, the world's third largest phone maker behind Samsung and Apple, is the latest to rekindle the quest for the phone camera holy grail. A, 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 a grail? Yes. Xiaomi put a lens mount on a phone prototype that lets you mount a Leica M lens. Now let me emphasize, it's just a prototype because of course it is. But what would it take for such a high-end camera phone setup to become a reality? My answer, Apple? So you might be saying, Patrick, I see you're passionate about this, but what are you talking about exactly? Okay, first, inside your phone's cameras are super tiny image sensors. They're usually smaller than a single Lego brick. Now, sometimes you see headlines that Sony or Sharp or um, years ago, Panasonic put a one inch sensor in a phone. Now, sadly, that name doesn't refer to the actual dimensions of the sensor and in reality is about 0.6 of an inch diagonally or in our approximation, two Lego bricks. Now, though that's big for a phone, it's rather small for a dedicated camera. Larger cameras have sensors that are closer in size to this, 12 Lego bricks. So the dream, the holy grail, is to have a big sensor closer to this, a full frame sensor that you find in a mirrorless camera, than this, something that is minuscule. Now, of course, these large image sensors are much more expensive than the little ones. Also, there are space considerations. A lens for a phone camera sensor is relatively small, but lenses for full frame sensors are much bigger and need more space between the back of the lens and the sensor. This is room that phones simply don't have. There are two approaches to improving a phone camera. The main one is using computational photography to overcome the limitations of a tiny sensor. Google, Apple, Samsung all use machine learning algorithms and even artificial intelligence to improve the photos you take with your phone. The other approach is something we saw years ago from Sony, which took an image sensor and a lens and made a grip that attaches to the back of a phone. Now, the idea was you could put this on your phone and use the screen as a viewfinder to control it using an app in Bluetooth. Essentially, you completely bypass the cameras on your phone. Now, Sony made several different versions with sensors that were just a bit bigger than those found in phone cameras. But Sony also made the QX1, which had an APS-C size sensor, which is about six Lego bricks big. Now that's not as large as a full frame sensor, but it is still much bigger than the image sensors found inside a phone. The QX1 also had a Sony E-mount, meaning you could put different lenses on it or use adapters and use Canon or Nikon lenses. And because you control it with Bluetooth, you could either attach it to the back of your phone or find different places to put it and take photos remotely. The QX1 came out in 2014 and cost $350. Imagine having something like that today. I mean, I would definitely buy a 2022 version of the QX1 if Sony made it. I mean, would you? Let me know in the comments. Sadly, Sony discontinued the QX1 a few years after it went on sale. And that's around the time Red, the company that makes cinema cameras used to film shows and movies like The Hobbit, The Witcher, Midsommar, and The Boys, made a phone called the Red Hydrogen One. Look, I'm not gonna get in the whole 3D screen thing, but just know that despite being a phone made by one of the best camera companies in the world, the Red Hydrogen One's cameras were on par with those from a $700 Android phone. But the back of the phone had pogo pens that were designed to be used to connect different modules, kind of like Moto Mods. 
including a cinema camera module that housed a large image sensor and a lens mount, essentially turning the phone into a mini red camera. Well, that never happened. The Red Hydrogen One was discontinued and now it shows up as a phone prop in films like F9 on the dashboard of Dominic Toretto's car or in the hands of Leonardo DiCaprio in the film Don't Look Up. And that brings us to Xiaomi. So basically Xiaomi took their 12S Ultra phone and made a special prototype. This is like seeing a concept car from an auto show. No matter how cool it is, you'll never get to drive it. The regular Xiaomi 12S Ultra has a circular camera bump. And what they did for their concept was build in a removable ring around the camera bump that exposes a thread to which you can attach a Leica M mount adapter. Meaning you can mount Leica M lenses to the 12S Ultra. <sighs> I mean, come on. Because most M mount lenses are manual focused only, you get compatibility with some of the smallest and best full frame lenses in the world. And while the Leica lens might cost thousands of dollars, since the M mount has been around for decades, it can use third party lenses, which cost a lot less. A few caveats. The Xiaomi 12S Ultra concept uses an exposed one inch sensor, which as I mentioned earlier, isn't actually one inch despite its misleading name. It's like the hoverboard of camera sensors. Next, this is purely a concept. I imagine if something like this actually went on sale, it would cost thousands of dollars, which is about the same price you'd pay for a very nice dedicated mirrorless camera, but one with a much bigger sensor. Last, is that Xiaomi's office in the video? I mean, are these guys working on a spaceship? If so, it puts the CNET office and well, everyone else's office to shame. So how does Apple enter into this? Well, they don't really. <laughs> I mean, there aren't any rumors that Apple is making an iPhone with a camera lens mount. There aren't murmurs that Apple is working on its own dedicated mirrorless camera. But if Xiaomi made a prototype of a phone with a professional lens mount, you have to imagine that somewhere in the basement of Apple Park sits an old concept camera that runs an iOS-like interface, is powered by an iPhone A-series chip, and able to use the same computational photography processing. And you have to wonder, how amazing would photos be from a camera that uses some of the same processing tricks that Apple or Google use in their phones? I mean, you'd be starting with a much better image that had much more detail and data to use. And how nice would it be to have a phone-like OS to share those photos and videos to Instagram or TikTok directly from your camera? Well, turns out Samsung tried that about 10 years ago when it released a series of cameras that run on Android. So are we noticing a theme here? Most of these ideas or approaches to this phone camera holy grail were tried eight, nine, 10 years ago. A few of these like that Sony QX1 were far ahead of their time, but I don't think Apple will ever release a standalone iOS powered camera or make an iPhone with a Leica lens mount. The truth be told, over the past decade, professional cameras have gotten smaller. For example, the most recent Leica M11 is about the width of a Galaxy S22 Ultra. Look, it's definitely thicker than a phone, but think of it this way. If you have a lens you're gonna put on your phone, you're probably carrying that lens in a bag, and that bag could probably just carry an M11 body in it too, right? And yes, Leica cameras and lenses are ridiculously expensive, but the same idea applies to other smaller camera bodies. Like from Sony, they have an APS-C line of cameras and lenses that are much more affordable. Their journey towards a phone camera holy grail is a decade long and has produced some of the wildest products and prototypes you could imagine. It's also been a decade of hyped up promises that end up being huge disappointments like the Red Hydrogen One phone and its modular camera system. But if there is a takeaway from all of this, it's just a reminder of how good the cameras on our phones have gotten in that time. And if you do want that step up into a professional camera, you can find one like the Fujifilm X100 that packs a large image sensor a sharp lens and can fit inside a coat pocket. <laughs> Look, that's all my heart can take on this topic, but I wanna hear from you. Do you think phone cameras need to be more like pro cameras or do pro cameras need to be more like phone cameras? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to CNET and thank you for watching.